Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this series that I'm putting together, we're doing a space station transfer from the ISS over to this rotating space station called the Station 5. I want to thank Dimitri one more time for putting this uh, scenario together for me. It's really cool. Let's go ahead and switch camera views here and jump into it. Let's get inside the Raven Star. So in the previous video, we took a look at our, our situation and we saw that our Delta V budget for this mission was 9,111 meters per second. And we saw that we were 66.31 degrees out of plane. It's gone up slightly since then, probably from the undocking. And we saw that we're at a periapsis of 358.1, apoapsis of 371.6 at that time. And we're trying to get over to the Station 5, which is at an altitude of 2,000 kilometers. And one thing we did was we looked at we looked at some different plans. Uh, plan number one was a very direct approach, uh, just just brute force driving ourself uh, plane alignment over to the same plane as the uh, Station 5, and then raising our orbit for rendezvous. And we saw that that plan does not work. It costs more. Delta V than we have in our budget, so that's a non-starter. Plan number two, uh, we did a little bit, you know, we tried to be a little bit more intelligent about it, and we would start by raising our orbit, and then doing the plane alignment, and then doing the rendezvous. And that plan seems to work, but it's a very tight budget. And we have plan number three, which is uh, taking us way out into space, takes us out to 100,000 kilometers. We then do the plane alignment, and we then do our rendezvous, and that plan gives us a surplus of about 3,000 meters per second. And then finally, we looked at plan number four, which was the same thing as plan number three, but when we come back to Earth, instead of doing a main engine burn, we would instead use Earth's atmosphere to save us the fuel cost of the main engine burn, and that leaves us a surplus of about 5,500. We also talked about the idea of using Earth's atmosphere to you know, surf along in order to help align our plane but that's uh, the, whether or not that's a good idea, I'm not even sure we can calculate that. Uh, we probably have to go trial and error on that one. So with all that said, I am obviously we're not doing plan one. I'm not going to do plan five. Uh, I've already demonstrated um, atmosphere surfing, although I do plan to revisit that. I'm not going to do plan two because I feel like that's a little bit too, uh, too tight of a budget and I would like to have uh, a bit more headroom than that. So what are we gonna do, plan three or plan four? Plan three and plan four are the same, one uses the atmosphere, the other one doesn't. Since we have a pretty good extra budget on plan three, I'm gonna go with plan three. Plan three um, will be a little bit easier to execute and it will be a little bit faster because whenever we're doing anything in the atmosphere, it's really difficult to use time warp. So by using the main engine when we get back to Earth, you know, we'll be able to pretty much use a lot of time warp. So plan number three is the winner. So let's set that up. All right, so we have undocked from the ISS and we have been, uh, you know, we're still pretty close to it, but we're, you know, slowly floating away, I suppose. So what we want to do is we want to raise one side of our orbit out to 100,000 kilometers. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use um, interplanetary MFD. And the reason I'm going to use inter interplanetary MFD is because I want to make sure that when I arrive at apoapsis, I'm also at the node of either the descending node or the ascending node of the station five. Because if I just arbitrarily raise my altitude out to 100,000 kilometers, I may arrive way after the node or way before it, and my timings will be all wrong, my calculation will be way off, and I may not be able to succeed in the plan. So I'm going to bring up interplanetary, don't crash, nice. I think I've figured it out. As long as I exit out of orbiter launch pad and start orbiter launch pad fresh each time, then things don't crash. But if I if I launch a mission, exit, launch a mission, exit, there's a good chance these MFDs will cause a crash. I'm not sure why that is. Hopefully that'll be addressed at some point. So we're gonna go to the MNU, and I believe it's in the course programs. Yes. I'm gonna go down to next. One thing I do wanna check, I still don't have non-spherical gravity sources enabled. 
So I thought I changed this, but I apparently, I thought I changed that in the config file. Maybe it's just not reading the config file, but I'm gonna set nodal regression to no. And for me, I have the mission timer set as MJD in the config file. So that's already sorted out for me. Back to menu, over to course, Delta Velocity Program, set. First thing I'm gonna do is change this projection. And now I'm going to uh, go down to Delta V and I'm not really sure, I think it's around 2000 or something like that. So rather than putting in a bunch of plus, I can start by putting in some number here. And uh, that takes me out to 1952. So I guess I need a bit more than that. Let me try, let me try one more time. Let me try 2500. Uh, that's pretty close. Let me do one more. Okay, so we're in the ballpark. So that just by entering in the Delta V directly, it sets my APA you know, and I'm going for a hundred M. So now I'm gonna go adjust, adjust, and I'm gonna add in Delta V until I'm at about a hundred. Doesn't have to be perfect, but as it happens, that looks like it's perfect. Okay, so now that gives me my altitude that I want, but now I wanna make sure that my node alignment uh, with the ascending and descending node is correct. So I'm going to target station five, hit enter. And what I want to do is I want to perform the burn, so my TEJ, my time to do the injection. I want to time it so that uh, this, uh, well, let me just let me just time it, put it where it needs to be, and you'll see. Let me go down to a 1x adjustment. I'm going to go forward in time because I don't want to try to go and do this, you know, do this in the past. So I'm moving time forward, and you can see how this hypothetical is coming around. And I'm going to keep moving that around until that blue dot is right on that node and I think there's actually a slightly better timing for that like where you do it just before or just after but I can't remember so I'm gonna put it where it's ex where that blue dot is exactly on that node so that when we arrive at Apoapsis we'll be on the other side I wish I could zoom in on that but when I go to page and center it doesn't really do anything so so I'm going to move that forward just a little bit more. About right there looks pretty good. And again, I, if I recall correctly, there's actually a slightly better way to do that. I think it might be where it's like just before you get there. But that is all the planning that I have to do to uh, set up my apoapsis. Let me take a sip of water. Now, I did notice that when I changed my timing, my apoapsis went down a little bit. So I'm going to put in a bit more delta V, just so I can be closer to that target number. And then maybe do an adjustment. <clears throat> and go down to 100M. So there we are. All right, so we're going to do this burn in 1,200 seconds, and there's nothing else that we have to wait for. So I'm going to go page, bring up the burn vector, hit auto burn, and now all we have to do is warp time forward. I guess I can bring up our orbit stuff. And again, since we're trying to be a little bit efficient in this mission, uh, it's not a DV freak mission, so we're, we don't have to be super crazy about it. Rotation. But we can just warp time forward and let burn time, uh, let IMFD take care of the alignment. But again, if we think, you know, a few hundred seconds out into the future, I know that by the time I get to the time to do the burn, this plus sign should be lined up in the middle. So if I start thinking about that now, and then warp time forward, the autopilot has less work to do. And we're getting pretty close to that point, uh, to the alignment. So I'm gonna kill rotation, warp time forward. And you know, we might do that a couple of times. We might come out of time warp once or twice just to help out the autopilot. And maybe about here. So let's uh, go a little bit that way. That's the wrong one. And a little bit of time warp. And that works out pretty well. And maybe kill right here. And when we get to 180 seconds, the auto burn will take over everything else. So let's just warp time forward. And as long as this doesn't get way out, yep, we're all good. And we're just going to warp time forward because all we're doing here is a main engine burn. Not real exciting. And interplanetary MFD can take care of that uh, without, uh, you know, without messing anything up. So here comes the burn. Yeah, 
and we're at 10x, it'll go down to 1x when it gets almost to the end of the burn. That way it can focus on the alignment and make sure everything is nice and tight. Okay, so that's our burn. And according to Orbit MFD, we're going to be at 101.1 um, M, which is a little bit higher than we targeted, but I don't know how accurate that is. But nevertheless, um, that burn is done. So one thing we can do that I'm always curious about is how accurate was our calculation? So let's take a look at that. So we have uh, main plus RCS. Yes, main plus RCS, we have six, two, four, six. So let's look at our calculator for a moment. And we're doing plan number three. And let's just go off to the side here. Let me bring that in a little bit. So we had a budget of 9111. And after that burn was complete, we had 6246 remaining. So if I take a C29 minus C30, I have 2865. And we, we, we estimated that the burn would cost 2855. So that's really close. That's really close to what it actually cost. Let me actually put that number up there. So let me think about this. Let me actually do that calculation here. So let me do it this way. Equals C1 minus, actually I forgot the number, 6246. So equals C1 minus 6246. C29, rather. Okay. So this was our budget. This is what we estimated it would cost. This is what it actually cost. That's, that's really close. I like that. Let's jump back in and continue. So the next order of business is to do our plane alignment, but we're not going to do that until we reach Apoapsis. So let's bring up Orbit MFD here. And let me think, what do I want to have open? I probably want to have a line plane. Let me just think here and let's, let's start warping time forward while I'm thinking. Uh, so another thing you might want to uh, think about is, do we have enough locks to do this? Uh, I should have talked about that in part one. I didn't. In the XR2, we have, uh, in this flight, we have 13 days of locks. And I don't remember if I showed how long it would take, uh, how, how much time it was going to take us to go all the way out to 100,000 uh, kilometers. So while I'm thinking about it, let me just show that really quick. So if I go to my orbit time calculator, and if we put in 100, so this is our periapsis, this is our apoapsis, so our complete full orbit is going to take 37 hours, so that's about a day and a half. So the point is we have plenty of locks. And if we wanted to bring down our plane change even more, the cost of it, if we doubled that and went way out into space, it would reduce our plane change cost, but it would also, we would also then take 300, wait, we would take 96 hours to orbit which is uh, four days, I believe. So, so you get to a point where you have to start balancing out, you know, how much time do I want to spend or how much time can I spend? Because eventually, you know, you'll spend so much time in space, you'll run out of locks and die. So those are things that we have to consider. All right, let's uh, continue on out to uh, the high point of our orbit. And we'll go a bit faster. I'm just worried about overshooting. So apoapsis time, 60,000 seconds. Time to the node. So it looks like our timing's a little bit off, but it's pretty close. So let's go ahead and warp time forward. Make sure we don't overshoot. So let me just take a look at things really quick. So we'll reach apoapsis in 14,600 seconds, but the time to the node. So we're about 2,000 seconds off. When you set up that maneuver uh, using the, the, the Delta V program, that dot, it needs to be a little bit before the actual point or a little bit after, I'm gonna to have to just experiment with that a few times and see, but our timing is still really close, we'll be fine. Let's go ahead and warp time forward. Let's get out to do our plane alignment, and by the time we're done with that, we'll probably be the end of this video. So I'm going to go ahead and watch, let me think, do I wanna watch, do I wanna do the burn at apoapsis or at the node? I wonder which one's more efficient because at apoapsis will be at our slowest point. Maybe halfway in between. Yeah, let's do that. So we'll, we'll do the maneuver halfway in between. So we'll pass apoapsis. And so like a thousand seconds 
uh, when when Tien is like a thousand, that way we'll be halfway in between. Seems reasonable to me. So just warping time forward. So we're really close now. So yeah, we'll have about 2,000 seconds left to the node. So I guess that means we left a little bit too... Would that be too soon or too late? I don't know, I can't think about it right now. But we'll go ahead and go to the time to the node 1,000. So we're really close to that point. Now, do we need to be in um, anti-normal or normal? Well, AN equals AN. Ascending node equals anti-normal. We need to be anti-normal. I'll go ahead and use the autopilot to get us there. Uh, we could be more efficient about it, but we do have that, you know, 3,000 delta V surplus. So let's uh, let's go ahead and go ahead and use some of that surplus. Now, there's two things that we're talking about doing here. We're talking about aligning our plane and raising our PEA out to 2,000, and we can actually do those simultaneously. And it's it's more it's cheaper if we do them at the same time. So I will do my best to um, turn that off. So I'll do my best to keep the vessel aligned such that we're bringing down our we're bringing down our a plane alignment and we're going to raise our altitude and hopefully not overshoot or undershoot too much one way or the other. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit close. No, I, I said a thousand. We'll stick to that. All right, so we're almost there. Let's align up one more time. And yeah, by the time we're done with this aligned plane, we'll call it apart and move on to the next video. So we're really close now. Let me just go ahead and turn that off. I'm in rotation. Let me just do a quick kill rotate. Full power on the main. And now my periapsis is going up. That's good, but I don't want it to climb super fast. So I'm going to keep an eye on my periapsis. And I'll try to keep that under control with my, my vessel here. And we're at 34 on our relative inclination. 25. 10. I'm gonna end up overshooting my PEA. Kill the main. Okay, so my PEA was really close but my relative inclination, I messed that up just a tiny bit, but 0.43 is not bad. We could even, we don't even have to fix it. But while we're here, we will fix it as best we can. So let's see. Translation. Did I overshoot or undershoot? I overshot just a little bit on the relative inclination. And it looks like the best we're going to be able to get is around 3.2. Yeah, right around there is the best as is, is the best we're going to get but that's fine we could we could easily rendezvous with a 0.32 difference though i imagine uh we'll go ahead and correct that at some point so our pea is uh just a little bit higher than we intended that's okay now let's see how we did on our burn and how it compared to our our calculation and this is the part that i find really interesting are my calculations close? And previously it was really close. So let's see what this one is. So let's see, now we need to say, so we estimated that plane change would cost 730. Now we actually, so we currently have 5,433 remaining. So let me put that over here, 5433. So what I need to do, so I need the difference between this, this, and this, I think. So let's go equals C29 minus C30 minus 5433. Yeah. So um, we estimated a 730 delta V cost, and it looks like the actual cost was 813. Although, bear in mind that we combined these two together... So, so since we combine them together, I would say our calculation was actually spot on because if I now subtract, um, because basically I don't have to do this burn because I've already done it. So that burn is basically zero. 
So what I'm curious is what I'm what I want to know is if I take let me do this. If I take that 813 and I subtract off that 7168, so this was my actual cost. So it only cost me, um, you know, like 11 meters per second more than I said it would. That's one way to look at it. Um, another way to look at it again is I just combine these two together. So what if I if I combine that and that? What is the total? So equals C31 no B31 plus B32 is is 801.68. So these two combined cost 801.68. My actual burn was 813. So that's only a difference of like 11 meters. That's really that's really close. I'm surprised it's that close. Usually the plane change burn um, is a bit more inaccurate than that. So so that's that's good. Um, and I'm just going to put a zero in there because we already you know we already performed we already performed that. So let's go ahead and switch camera views here. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Hope you've enjoyed watching it. When we come back in the next part, we're going to make our way down to Earth and take care of the next part of the mission. I will see you in the next part.